Tunisia still teetering between democracy and autocracy. The president moves to dissolve the country's judicial council. His opponents say it's proof he's taking Tunisia back to one-man rule. Judges are resisting, but has the president already consolidated power? I'm Andrea Sankey, and today's newsmaker is Kai Sai. For his opponents, it's further evidence of the president's unrelenting power grab. But Kai Said says the problem lies with Tunisia's judiciary. On Monday morning, police sealed the gates to the country's Supreme Judicial Council, preventing staff from getting to work. Police have been enforcing the president's move to dissolve the council. Said accuses its officials of colluding with criminals by appointing corrupt judges. He's criticized the council for allegedly manipulating trials for political reasons including in the case of Chokri Belaid, a left-wing opposition figure assassinated exactly nine years ago on Sunday. Unfortunately, some judges in the courts have manipulated this case. This is not the first trial where they have tried to hide the truth for years. If I gave you, and we certainly have them, the documents about the property and funds that a number of members of the judiciary have obtained, maybe Tunisians would not believe it. We will work on bringing an end to this situation, and we will work on putting in place a law or a temporary decree for the Supreme Judicial Council. So let this council consider itself a thing of the past from this moment onwards. Well, before being elected in 2019, Kai Said was a constitutional law professor and a strong supporter of the role the judiciary plays in a well-functioning state. So is something rotten in Tunisia's legal system? And if so, is the best way to eradicate corruption and political influence really by bringing it under the control of the presidency? Tunisian judges and major political parties certainly don't think so. They've all condemned the dissolution of the Judicial Council. The Speaker of the Parliament, Rashid Khanouchi, who also leads the biggest opposition group in Akda, spoke out against the closure, calling it unconstitutional. And the head of the Tunisian Supreme Judicial Council had this to say. The president has moved to the stage of seizing institutions. What is happening is very dangerous and illegal. Well, it's seen by some as Kai Said's latest move to consolidate power and dismantle democratic institutions. In July, he suspended parliament, sacked the prime minister, and assumed executive authority. In August, he extended a state of emergency that was only supposed to be in place for 30 days until further notice. In September, Said granted himself full presidential powers, abolished the constitutional monitoring body, stripped parliamentarians of immunity from prosecution, and ended their privileges, including their salaries. In October, he installed a new prime minister, Najla Boudan Ramdane, the first woman ever to hold that office. But critics say the unelected prime minister is a Said loyalist with little independence. In November, he assured the U.S. Secretary of State that things would soon return to normal. He said he'd been forced to act over economic and social problems and because Parliament had turned into a theater for confrontation. In December, Said announced that once he's rewritten the Constitution, he'll put it to a referendum in July. But all major political parties and civil society groups have been excluded from that process. By January this year, more than a dozen political officials were facing prosecution, including Rashid Hanouchi. And the UN condemned what it says is the arbitrary detention of two other political figures. On the morning of the 31st of December, men in civilian clothing bundled Nureddin Biri, an MP for the Inada party and a former justice minister, into a car outside his home with no warrant and no explanation given. A second man was also taken away and detained on the same day and in similar circumstances with his location unknown until the 4th of January. We urge the authorities to either promptly release or properly charge these two men in accordance with due process standards for criminal proceedings. Well, six months on from what many see as a coup by Kai's side, the concerns of ordinary Tunisians remain the same. Having a job and enough money to put food on the table but it's hard to see any signs that life has improved for most people in the only democracy to emerge from the Arab Spring. So let's look further 
at the situation in Tunisia now. And joining me from Tunis is Raya Ben Mbarak. She's a Tunisian journalist who's been covering these latest developments. In Washington, D.C., we have Radwan Masmoudi. He's a member of Tunisia's Nakhda Party and the president of the Center for the Study of Islam and Democracy. And Sami Hamdi joins us from London. He's the editor-in-chief of the International Interest. Thanks all so much for being with us. You know, at the core of this latest move by Kai Saeed is, is his allegation that the judiciary is simply corrupt and can't serve the country. Graya, how many Tunisians actually believe that? Well, the talk about the corruption of the judiciary and how much the judiciary has uh, failed Tunisians throughout the past 10 years have been definitely uh, spoken about a lot in the Tunisian street, by Tunisians on social media. Um, so far, it's true that the, these remain allegations by the Tunisian president. Like, there are no actual proof that there is corruption within the judicial, the Supreme Judicial Council, or like the uh, judiciary uh, in general. Uh, however, what Tunisians uh, perceive throughout the past 10 years is that there have been lots of stalling in terrorism cases and corruption cases, namely the cases of the two uh, assassinations that took place in 2013 of two leftist leaders, uh, Shukri Bouraid and Mohamed Ibrahimi. Yesterday, I was out in front of the High Judicial Council high headquarters uh, in Tunis, uh, and um, I spoke to uh, several of Kai Saeed's uh, supporters who perceived the decision uh, made by the president or like the intention expressed by the president to dissolve the council as uh, a step forward and actually a step in order to uh, make the judiciary uh, more free and to tackle uh, what they called as corruption within the judicial body, uh, which they claim that uh, have uh, uh, partisan have served partisan interests rather than serving um, their uh, main role of uh, tackling um, uh, the uh, several cases in terrorism and okay. uh, corruption. However, to be honest, like the number of people that showed up in front of the council yesterday was very much a limited number of uh, high side supporters, and even within that number, I've seen several conflicts taking place on scene. Uh, several people also were kicked out, but uh, high side supporters calling them infiltrators. So I definitely. I'm seeing like some certain uh, shift in the position taken by Saeed supporters and some division uh, on the streets. Interesting. And at the same time, there were, there were people who are also not part of Saeed supporters, but from other like leftist parties, also from who've seen the uh, High Council for Lawyers support these decisions uh, because they've always uh, seen the judiciary as um, lacking uh, okay. of uh, independence. And for the past 10 years. I want to talk more about uh, Saeed's supporters in just a minute, but first uh, let me ask Sammy. I mean, does the judiciary need dramatic reform, and is there any political value uh, in dismantling the judiciary like this? It looks, it looks autocratic. It hurts Saeed's image in many ways, but he doesn't seem to care. I think over the years, there have been many complaints with regards to the judiciary, but I think this decision is best understood within the recent context of what's taking place in Tunisia. And by recent, I mean the past few weeks. We've seen staunch supporters of Kai Saeed coming out on Facebook and the like, essentially uh, expressing their pessimism over what is taking place in Tunisia, describing the coup as wobbling and taking uh, uh, very much a, a lot of pessimism from the resignation of the most powerful individual in the, in the Qartaj palace, which is Nadia Akasha who was Kai Saeed's right-hand woman and who was the head of his uh, office. Her resignation, according to Saeed supporters, suggests that all is not well. There's also concern that despite UAE and Saudi support in terms of their media and the like for the coup, financial backing is not forthcoming. And that's because Washington appears to be quite uh, upset and annoyed over what Saeed is doing in uh, Tunisia. And this is why we saw this decision taking place in the sense that the timing of it, the anniversary of the assassination of Shukri Bil Eid, Qais Saeed is seeking to play on this popular conspiracy theory that another somehow were involved in those assassinations. And that's why Qais Saeed has, uh, has taken this decision to say that another are the reason why the judiciary have not produced a court ruling with regards to these assassinations. They infiltrated this high judicial council and therefore it should be removed. In other words, the decision comes in a climate in which 
there is genuine trepidation amongst Qais Said supporters who believe that these rumors, that there is some fact to these rumors, that perhaps the army might intervene and might remove Qais Said and replace him with the interior minister, and also frustration on the part of Qais Said supporters that the scapegoats for uh, the crises in Tunisia, i.e. being in Nahva, that their leaders have yet to be arrested. There's also frustration on the part of Qais Said that the, that the political opponents he has dragged before military courts, whether that's Saifuddin Makhlouf, whether that's Mohammed al-Affas, whether that's uh, other political opponents, Yasin al-Ayari, despite dragging them through the military courts, they've all been released. In other words, the judiciary is not doing the bidding of Qais Said. It's not facilitating his coup in the manner that Egypt's judiciary did when Sisi overthrew the democratically elected Mohammed Morsi. And this is why the, the, the driving factor of the decision has nothing to do with the state of the judiciary. The driving factor is this PR stunt to associate the decision with Shukri Bilaid, to play on the conspiracy theory, to say I'm tackling another's deep state influence, the alleged deep state influence of another. Said is playing on that. And that's why he contradicted his own interior minister, his interior minister who said there should be no protest because of COVID. Qais Said contradicted him and said to his supporters, go and protest, protest on the anniversary of Shukri Bilaid, come out and show your support okay. for me. This is about Qais Said trying to dispel these rumors that the coup is in trouble and to give the image instead that all is going well. Okay. Radwan, I mean, Sami thinks this has nothing to do with the actual integrity of the judiciary itself, what uh, Qais Said has done, but still... I mean, if the Judicial Council is fully dismantled by whatever basis, either what Sammy alluded to or what Kai Said says uh, is that he thinks is the case, do you fear what replaces the Judiciary Council once it is dismantled and where that will take the Tunisian government and this process of returning to democracy? Um, no, I don't think there is a process of returning to democracy under Qais Saeed. Um, Qais Saeed is implementing his coup against democracy. He's dismantling the institutions of democracy uh, each month and each week. He dismantles more and more uh, institutions. Of course, the latest now is the Judicial Council, the uh, High Judicial Council, which is the only guarantor that we have an independent judiciary. In a democracy, there, is no, there has to be separation between the branches of the government. There has to be checks and balances between the branches of the government. But Qais Saeed wants to have control over all three branches. That's why he closed down the parliament and he has been legislating himself by decree, so replacing the parliament. But now he also wants to take over uh, control of the judiciary by disbanding this uh, high council elected by the judges. They, they, we must uh, uh, explain that uh, that's how we, we guarantee the independence of the judiciary, because this uh, high council, high judiciary council, is elected by the judges. If there are accusations of uh, corruption or any wrongdoing, they have to be taken by, the, by this body, which is elected by the judges. It is the judges who control the, the, this body, not the president. I think it would be uh, very dangerous to have the judiciary uh, system, the justice system, under the control of the president. Uh, that would be okay. the end of democracy, in, the end of democracy as we know it. Mm. And Kaya... that will make it officially a, a coup. You know, this, this okay. will make it officially a coup. Right. Chaya, let me ask you, because it really has been difficult. I know you said you saw these protesters uh, out there over the weekend, and they were actually quite limited in numbers, those supporting Chaya Said. But it has been difficult at best um, to get any remotely accurate polls out of Tunisia. At one point, though, there was one that said Chaya Said is losing support, but that he is still the most popular politician in Tunisia. It's almost like a race to the bottom. But still, is he doing better than the competition, for as bad as things are? Uh, certainly, he is doing better. Uh, despite the fact that throughout the past few months, since he has taken uh, the decisions on July 25th, uh, there have been kind of uh, a decrease or suspicions emerging to the surface about uh, the path ha that he has chosen uh, to take. But still to today, whenever I go out and I talk to Tunisians during my job, uh, there's still some hope like for Tunisians. And I think the hope that Tunisians bear is uh, the fact that they still... 
believe that he is an honest man, that uh, the only uh, driver that made him take these decisions is uh, the legacy of the political class throughout the past 10 years, the failure to tackle pressing issues that Tunisians face on a daily basis, and namely economic, uh, socioeconomic uh, issues. Um, the suspicion has started to emerge from, I would say, some politicized individuals who have, okay, given him a chance at the beginning and said, we needed somebody to take an initiative in order to take the country out of its political predicament. Uh, he's definitely losing some support, but the support for Kais Saeed remains, um, remains high okay. uh, till today. And that is why... Um, would probably like would probably still whenever you go out and you talk to a good number of Tunisians, uh, the majority is going to be so like we believe in the honesty of this man. He's not going to be a tyrant. He's not going to fail us like the political class that have failed us for the past ten years. And also the fact, according to Tunisians, that he has actu actually given one thousand chance to the judiciary, to the political class, to political parties, civil society, mm -hmm. in order to. Um, make a change, but he has not seen uh, a change. Okay. Uh, however, yeah, there's definitely also... Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Guy. I, I wanted to get to Sammy about one of the points you made. Yeah, just like one final thought is that some people, even like former supporters or people who supported him fully since the beginning, believe that Kai Saeed now is actually too caught up in his own bubble and he's only listening to himself and he's no longer even listening to people uh, surrounding him. That's one also fear that I'm kind of like uh, depicting in uh, within like the general atmosphere from even like some supporters of Saeed. Okay, okay. Uh, Sami, let me come back to you. You know, Gaia was saying among many Tunisians, there is still a glimmer of hope in what uh, Kai's side can achieve. Now, he said he needed one year, really, uh, to rule by decree, uh, to enact the reforms necessary and to hold that referendum on the Constitution, and then elections, which are still supposed to happen in December 2022. Is there a possibility that he can actually adhere to the deadlines he set? I think that when we look at Kai Saeed's uh, actions, when we look at the manner in which he suspended parliament and insisted it was within the law, even though Article 80 doesn't allow him to suspend the constitution, it says clearly that parliament should remain in permanent session. When we see that his close advisors can't seem to tolerate and are resigning and are leaving him, when we see that uh, uh, the, the manner in which he criticizes his opponents on almost a daily basis, calling them hypocrites, calling them opportunists, the way that he's been going after the judiciary, and the like. It's clear that Kai Saeed does not see any room for cooperation or even working together in terms of going with Tunisia forward. Even his supporters, those who supported the coup, the trade unions, the leftist parties like Tayara Demokrati and the like, have been ignominiously ignored by Kai Saeed, even though they've been shouting from the top of their lungs that they want to be part of this coup process and they want to work with him in entrenching uh, this coup. But I think that when it comes to uh, Kai Saeed, I think it's important to note here that I disagree with Gaia that the support is for Kai Saeed, but I understand the point made in that it's not that people support Kai Saeed, it's that people do not want to go back to the parliament that was there before. You can convince a Tunisian that the coup is wrong. You can convince him that Kai Saeed is not going to abide by his promises. But if you tell him that the solution is to go to a parliament that's similar to the past 10 years, he'll tell you, absolutely not. I'll choose the unknown is better for me than to go back to that parliament. And I think that's the tragedy of what's unfolding in Tunisia, in that the democracy of the past 10 years did not deliver social justice, did not deliver any benefits. We saw benefit systems for unemployed voted down by parliament. We saw free access to health care voted down by parliament. We saw salaries given to deceased soldiers to, uh, voted down by parliament. We saw parliament instead vote for forgiving the tycoons who, uh, who stole money from the okay. Tunisian state. We saw parliament vote for bailing out tycoons in the industry. And that's the tragedy. And it's not that people support Kai Saeed, is that there is no alternative solution that appeals to the Tunisians. That's and what I was just going to ask note, you. I mean, just, just on this point, ahead. just final, final two sentences. And when I took, I'm from Sidi Bouzid, the hometown where the revolution took place. When you speak to my clansmen, my tribesmen, my countrymen, when you ask them, what do you think about the High Judicial Council? They will tell you, this is a mess and nahda left. Kai Saeed is not to blame 
for this mess. In other words, there's still this bogeyman that is that people believe to be another. And the reason being is that even if I believe that it is unsubstantiated, it is what, make, what makes Qais Saeed's coup strong. It's mm -hmm. not he's supported by security services or UAE or Saudi. It is the dismal failure of the past 10 years that when you tell people go out against the coup, they tell you, wait, if it means to get parliament back, I'm not for that. Understood. And even amongst the opposition, final sentence, the final sentence, even amongst the opposition, Munsef al Marzugi himself said there should be no return to parliament if the Speaker of Parliament stays in place. Najib Shebi is against the coup but says parliament shouldn't return. There should be national dialogue. This is the crux of the issue that I think is not fully addressed by the opposition and why Said continues to be in power. So, okay, let me ask Radwan then why it is not being addressed by the opposition, as Sami says. Well, first of all, let me uh, uh, express uh, that, in my opinion, there is a big lie uh, that Qais Saeed coup is popular. I don't think it is popular. I think that uh, in, a in a dictatorship like the one we have right now in Tunisia, people are simply afraid to speak up their mind. They are afraid to say that they are against Qais Saeed because there has been a lot of people who have been arrested for saying that. There are uh, uh, bloggers who are now in jail for blogging on their Facebook account against Qais Saeed. So the proof that he does not have that much popularity was reflected in two events. On, uh, on December 17th, he called on his people to come out in the street to celebrate the revolution, the new date for the revolution that he announced, which was December 17th. At the same time, there was a demonstration against the coup in the same avenue in, the, in downtown Tunis at the same time. The demonstration that was supporting Qais Saeed had less than three or 400 people maximum. The other demonstration against Qais Saeed had at least five to 10,000 people minimum. You can see the pictures, the videos uh, yourself. And then again yesterday, he called on his people to come down in the street and uh, to support his call to uh, close down the Judicial Council. How many people came, came out yesterday after he appeared on TV Saturday night at midnight, calling his people and urging the Ministry of Interior to allow them to demonstrate because there is a ban on demonstrations in Tunisia now. Okay. He overruled that ban. And, and the people who, how many people came? Gaia, you were there. Less than 200 people and the, and the photos uh, are there to prove it. Less than 200 people in a capital of 3 million people right. came out in response to his so there is no, there is, yes, people are angry at the achievements of the revolution or lack of achievements mm. of the revolution in, on the economic side and the social justice side. Okay. But the way to solve those problems is through democracy, through elections. If he believes he's okay. popular and that, Nahda, and that Nahda is no longer popular, let's do early elections now, next month. Gail Why do we have to wait a whole, a whole year to do election because he wants to dismantle everything mm. in the democracy that we have built. Sometimes elections are very expensive and, and difficult to organize. So so maybe there is some no, leeway no, for no, that. They, but, but let me ask Gaia, just very no, quickly, cannot, Gaia, are, are Tunisians afraid? Is there an element of that just fear of truly expressing their opinion in this case right now? Uh, to be honest, I do not think so. Uh, like in terms of freedom of expression, Tunisians, I'm pretty much sure that there is no go back like to prior to 2011. People still express their opinions. It is true that we've seen uh, someone go to jail after, well, being sentenced to jail after expressing uh, his opinion on Facebook. But um, I'm really cannot, I can really cannot see any type of fear depicted within the the Tunisia, the majority of Tunisians that I'm meeting are, are on a on a daily uh, on a daily basis. Um, the fact that Qais Saeed is uh, taking some drastic decisions that the, the political class is pretty much um, the, the former political class is pretty much uh, against does not mean that regular Tunisians are actually pretty much afraid. So for me, the fear that I'm seeing is within the politicized class, but from regular Tunisians, despite the fact that uh, some there is, as I said, a decreasing amount of Tunisian supporting Qais Saeed on a daily basis, but I can still see people expressing their opinions, whether being 
with him or against him. Okay. Uh, I'm really, I'm really, I cannot agree with Mr. Masmoudi uh, okay. on this point. I'll tell you what, we have one minute left. I just need to get to this, Sammy, very quickly. Do you expect the international community to take any stance here? Some are saying France in particular holds real leverage over Kai's side. Would this be the time? And will France put some pressure on Kai's side to change tact in this case? Or is the international community staying out of Tunisia for now? I think the international community has had some impact in that the UAE and Saudi Arabia, one of the popular reasons or popular touted reasons that they haven't given money is because they're very worried uh, about uh, angering uh, Biden. It's clear that the Americans are not necessarily happy with Qaisai. And according to rumors, the reason that none of the opposition or, 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 or the, the, the main opposition have been arrested is because the army has told Qaisai that we have Washington breathing down our back. So the international community uh, is being seen as at least putting some sort of constraints or limits on the actions that Qaisai uh, can take. But I do think that uh, ultimately, it's an internal process more than it is external process. Okay. The reality is that from the army's perspective, people are angry. Nothing has happened in 10 years. Kai Saeed used that environment for the army. They're well aware that even if people turn against Kai Saeed, they don't necessarily want to return to a parliament that looked like the, okay. that what it looked like beforehand. And right. that's the dilemma in Tunisia, and that's what no one can agree on. Sammy, you will have the last word. Very unfortunately, we're out of time for this edition of the Newsmakers. I'd like to thank all three of my panelists so much for being with us, really, and our viewers, of course, for tuning in as well. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter at the underscore Newsmakers, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Andrea Sankey. We'll see you next time.